Zachary. Zachary. Hi, Zachary. Hi. Hi. Now you're coming too close to me. Yeah. There's Nate eating again. Are you figuring anything out, Kirsten? Barely. Glasses? Yeah. Oh. I that. You see her? Major. ...to be in a Christmassy mood, so it seems everyone was trying. Sergeant Tom Dore used... Okay, get any closer. <laughs> Don't move it to choice. Oh, no. ...and fought as they always do on days like this for soldiers far away. You sure? Huh? You sure? Sit in the chair. The light's in the way. Now whose glasses are those? Yeah, sure. They look perfect on you. But today it's all presents and laughter, filling up some of the emptiness with the joys of Christmas. And then you think, the pain in your heart is worst. How many times I told my dad to see a doctor? He was stubborn, but the pain in his stomach just wouldn't go away. He had to go. You should have seen the relief on his face when the doctor said my life was up. He said it was indigestion, and his kind of indigestion needed strong medicine. My letter is strong medicine, strongly recommended. In fact, my letter is the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor says my letter. Also available.
down for a Christmas dinner. Some U.S. Marines went out on a volunteer mission in Mogadishu today. The soldiers were looking for people in need, and they weren't hard to find. Bob Simon picks up the story. There's something different about this operation. That much was clear from the start. One platoon, Force 81, the Marines call it, has been working the toughest sector of town. It's called a no-man's land, but there are lots of kids here. The Marines have gotten to know them, taught them a few tricks, picked up a few things as well. The kids have become their prime intelligence sources. They know weapons the way other kids know baseball. Force 81 thought today would be the right day to pay back some favors, spread some good cheer. The Marines walked up the road to say Merry Christmas to Mogadishu. It was paved with good intentions. Their first stop was an orphanage. They opened a street side clinic. Grandpa, how do you take the day off? How do you take the, how do you put the time on? Time? Chantel!
just then that grace appeared, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. His grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less day. Did you ever call the Corey? Rollers, they just burn she called me. Up the, um, oh. Rollers, they're 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 How is she doing? She's fine. The one with the, the baby. baby. They're, she, they're moving to Decatur. Hmm? They're moving to Decatur. Oh, they're back together? Yeah. Well, here they're saying, uh, well, what, why are you laughing? What do you mean? Because, um... Are you You ain't moving to Phoenix. After hey, you graduate, here. Kristen, why should it matter to you where I go? Cause. Well, two years ago. Oh, yeah. I thought you could not wait. Well, it doesn't to mean you have to move. Oh, I'm today. Get out. Sure. <laughs> I mean, that, that I got for Christmas. Oh, you got it. You know, I always carry my wallet stuff in my pocket, but today I put it in my back pocket. I wonder who could put one in there. Bye, everybody. Bye. You just gotta, yeah, be, you well, gotta be my hands and talk for me. But uh, I used to have that inside pocket, or I'm used to having it, and I don't have it now, so I gotta put my, I've got to put my wallet in my right rear pocket. But then that's uncomfortable to, to sit on, you know. <laughs>
Did I?